Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Ahabit tifillah, so this is our first jalsa and in the Sheikh Hamad Al-Ansari's Tawheed wa Aqeedah series So the first concept, the first thing he mentioned he mentioned the division of Tawheed the division of Tawheed Aqsam al-Tawheed and he says, Tawheed al-Uluhiya, meaning the servitude of worship. This is Islamic monotheism. Uh, Tawheed al-Uluhiya, also known as Tawheed al-Ibadah, that some of the scholars called it also Tawheed al-Ibadah because it has to do with the actions of the servant, <clears throat> meaning that you and I give all of our worship, direct all ibadah to Allah Azza wa Jal. That nothing is worthy of worship except the law, and that's where all of our ibadah goes to. <clears throat> so in this regard, the Sheikh says, Tawheed al-Uluhiya, servitude of worship, is one of the three types of Tawheed. So that means Tawheed generally is classified in three categories as we see is the common conceptualization of Tawheed to Ahlul Sunnah in contemporary times, dividing it into three categories. So it's one of the three types of Tawheed and is the most important type of Tawheed because it is regarding the issue of Tawheed, which caused differences between the prophets and their people. So the Sheikh is mentioned in the fact that really where a lot of the people went astray the previous nations is regards to Tawheed al-Ibadah or Tawheed uh, al-Uluhiyah in that they differed with their prophets who called them to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone that their dua their supplications, their prayer their sacrifices their hajj you know, all their, their acts of worship be directed to Allah Azza wa Jal alone. Why did this cause difference? Because many of the people went astray by committing shirk, by committing and directing those acts of worship to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, they began to pray to Allah wal Uzza, you know, to other false deities, and to fashion their own deities with their hands. And various ways of moving away from the pristine worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this regard, how do we know this? Because the Sheikh is making a claim. We need to test his claim. We need to test his hypothesis. Well, we know this because Allah Azza wa Jal says, في كتابه الكريم ولقد we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and avoid false deities besides him. So it shows us that all the prophets alayhim wasalam, were all sent with the same message to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and to avoid worshiping false deities. So it lets us know that that's the asl of Tawheed. And that's the asl of our ibadah. And that's the asl of the deen. Had the deen al-qayyimah. That is the deen, the straight deen. And so, the sheikh then begins to mention, he says, <clears throat> some of the scholars defined it, I mean, he defined uh, Tawheed, you know, that ikhlas, that sincerity of worship to Allah alone who has no partners, some of the scholars, they defined it as it is the knowledge and acknowledgement that Allah Ta'ala is the uh, possessor of uluhiya, the servitude of worship, and servitude of worship over all his creation completely, and singling out Allah alone with all worship, and having sincerity of the deen for Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
Wama khalaqtu al jinn wal insa li yabudun. I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So we know that the divine purpose of why we were created is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And there's no doubt that we have so much taqsir, so much uh, shortcomings, not just in our worship, but in sharing the message. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us because we don't always seem to find the opening. But I think one of the things that we can always do is at least make da'wah with your actions, even if you're not always speaking with your tongue. For example, I just ran into some hikers looking for crystals up here. Of course, I didn't tell them anything about Tawheed. But they asked me about the crystals. And I just had good moral conduct, good manners with them. But we don't always often think about taking that opportunity to call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. But at least, at least have the intention. And at least show people the goodness of the believers and the good conduct and how you treat other human beings. Because all of this is witnessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of it is witnessed by Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to be just, just with his creation. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Balaga anni walo ayah. You know, relate about me even if it was a ayah even if it was you know one verse or even if it was something simple that you should send that the message of islam or sunnah to mankind and because that's the haq of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this tawheed we're talking about now is the haq of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when he was riding on the donkey with Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala an, he said, Ya Mu'adh, atadri, atadri ma haqqal al ibadi wa ma haqqal ibadi ala Allah. He said, Allah wa rasuluhu wa alam. Allah and his messenger know best. So Mu'adh, he said, haqqal Allah al ibadi an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bi shayin. So the Prophet said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala He said, oh Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon his servant and the right of the servant upon Allah? He said, Allah wa rasuluhu a'lam He said, haqqullah al-ibadi The right of Allah upon his servant is that he worships him and him alone And the right of the servant upon Allah is that he doesn't punish him that, that does this, that fulfills this, uh, this action of Tawheed. This is why the Shaykh here is mentioning this most important aspect of the deen. And this is why we have to understand that when we hear people who their whole da'wah has never, never mentions really worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never mentions or even any details about Tawheed, then you've got to know their da'wah is suspect. Their da'wah is suspect. What is a suspect? It's suspect for bid'ah. It's suspect for mukhalifat. It's suspect for akhta, you know, for many sin, uh, many mistakes, many deviations. So the Sheikh was talking about uh, this Tawheed al uluhiyah and he says, in its definition, as some of the scholars defined it, singling out Allah for worship, uh, some of the scholars defined it as sincerity of worship for Allah alone. Who has no partner some of the scholars defined it as it is the knowledge and acknowledgement that Allah Ta'ala is the possessor of uluhiya and servitude of worship over all his creation completely and singling out Allah alone with all worship and having sincerity of the deen for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and then he mentions the ayat as we mentioned already I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me in the next sitting We'll continue on and we'll talk about more details about Tawheed al-Uluhiyah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.